Welcome to HB RV Lifestyle, the podcast. I am the host, the Honey Badger, here to give it to you straight and transparent about the RV business, as well as other things. Uh, today, I've got a lot of updates for you. Several of them deal with the frame flex and frame failure side of things. I call it overall construction issues. And then I also want to go over a couple of articles that have a bunch of corporate mumbo jumbo in them. And I don't mean that in a negative way. It's just there's a narrative that's being put out there in these two articles. And I just want to remove the narrative out to give you what the reality is. That way, there isn't too much confusion if you hear these things at the dealership level or if you read them in an article on the internet. And lastly, guys, today, nothing but excitement. I'm going to talk about the future of the channel, uh, my main channel. I'm going to talk about the future about this podcast. Uh, we got more platforms that are inviting this podcast onto it. Lots of exciting stuff. Stick around for that because I'm really excited to talk about it. I really am. Okay, so let's start with frame flex and frame failure. Uh, I'm going to try not to be so passionate and cuss at all during this episode. It's going to be a goal of mine today, okay? So here, here's just to give you guys a quick update. I have now added uh, Keystone, Montana, High Country to my list. And the reason why I have done that is because the data I'm being sent is not just momentum and solitude. Like, I, like I've said several times, Grand Design RV is not the only one that has reported issues with the frame. They are just predominantly the biggest offenders of this problem and several versions of this problem. Okay? Overall, we're just going to call them the construction problems. We're talking about frame breakage, Things of that nature, walls separating, etc. I've had a couple, of, I've had like two van lays. I've had a couple of Jayco North points here and there. But we're talking about out of hundreds of emails, very little of anything else besides grand design solitude, grand design momentum year models 2018 to even brand new ones that people took possession of three or four months ago. Now, what's interesting, and I want to add this on one more time before I get into Montana high country, is what's interesting is even now we're three weeks into gathering data and still not one grand design reflection. So for those of you worried about grand design reflection, so far, I have zero reports of this construction problem with the lighter weight, smaller um, tier down in the grand design hierarchy. But what's interesting is Montana High Country is a step below Montana, lighter weight, uh, lighter pin weights for the most part, they are not as luxurious as the bigger, heavier Montanas. Yet what I'm seeing is a pattern where the amount of folks that own a 2019, 2018, and even 2021 Keystone Montana High Countries are starting to send me information that now they're having issues with this frame problem or construction problem. And a lot of it reads very similar to the momentums and the solitudes. Now, the reason why I find this interesting is because the things I'm not hearing about, so I'm not hearing about reflection, I'm not hearing about Cougar fifth wheels by Keystone, I'm not hearing anything from Forest River. Cedar Creek, Riverstone, Flagstaff Rockwood, Columbus. I'm not hearing about those, which is shocking to me. Now, it doesn't mean I won't hear about them later on as we gather more data. But it's like, 
there's there's it, and I can't quite point my finger on it yet because again I don't have all the data yet. Once I have enough data collected, I can dig deeper down the rabbit hole into Wonderland. Okay. Now, on a side note regarding the same thing, I got there's several and I'm not talking about 5 or 6 people. There are more than 3 dozen people that have contacted me one way or another telling me that apparently there's a corporate YouTuber out there, an RV Corporation YouTuber, that did a 60-minute video on frame flex and frame failure. And I'm like, okay, that's that's good. I haven't personally watched the video. But there's a lot of folks that say that they're that they're a little confused by the information and they're confused by why is he all of a sudden doing it now? And I'm going to defend him, okay? And, and, and it's something I don't normally do. I don't normally defend any kind of corporate yes man, okay? There's a lot of them out there, guys. There's not just one. Everybody associates with the one person, but there are several. There are over two dozen corporate RV YouTubers out there. They do several things. There's parts versions, sales versions, service versions. Uh, and then there's guys on the other side of things that have never been in the RV business. They just full-time RV and show up to shows and put on their podcast hearsay stuff, okay? And there's no context. Or they bring on a, um, you know, maybe they bring a, a guest on that's, angry and mad because they're an RV dealership in a small town. They're getting their butt kicked by Camping World and they hate Camping World or whatever the case may be, okay? So let's defend this guy for a second. First off, we don't know because the one question I asked some of the folks that called me today was, hasn't he talked about it a couple of times in his monthly update videos? And they go, well, we're not sure. Okay. So I said, I think I'd go back to those and see if maybe he mentioned something in the service side or part side. Okay. Number two. And it's not just speaking about him. This is speaking about anybody on a corporation level. Okay. Not just this person. We're talking about any corporate level YouTuber. You have to imagine that they have a legal team behind them that more than likely has to sign off on a lot of the content. Okay, that's number one. Number two, if you're a large corporate dealership and you are selling grand design products like Solitude and Momentum, and you're selling Keystone High Country or Keystone Montana High Country, now that I've kind of mentioned them, and you bring this up, it's kind of cutting your nose off to spite your face. Whether it's right or not it is not the question. It's So let's just say, for example, that this is an issue that... I'll give you an example. There's a guy in... Massachusetts, that's a corporate RV YouTuber, okay? And they sell grand design products. So there's a legal team that says, wait a minute, no, 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 no. You're not talking about that unless we get confirmation that it's okay to talk about it. Because again, we don't know what kind of verbiage is inside the dealer agreements between the factory and the and the corporation. We don't know what kind of content that they are, can, can and cannot do. We don't know any of that stuff. See, I'm an independent. So I don't know what kind of contracts or what kind of deals are struck, things of that nature. It's just like, here's a great example, guys, and this is a little off topic. Brinkley 
every Brinkley dealership that I talk to does not want me to come film and do a review on a Brinkley on their lot. Not because Brinkley's doing anything wrong. Not at all. But more than likely, there's some kind of verbiage in the contract that Brinkley did with these dealers that says that content has to be basically controlled and there's got to be certain ways it's done and, and things of that nature. That there's probably marketing clauses in these contracts. So if I show up to, let's say, oh, I don't know, um, who's a Brinkley dealer I could think of? Um, let's say Mike Thompson RV in Southern California. And even though we try to hide everything as good as possible, some guy walks by me, asks me a question with a Mike Thompson shirt or accidentally some kind of Mike Thompson memorabilia is around in the distance. Mike Thompson could get in trouble because it's breaking their dealer agreement with Brinkley. Now, I'm not saying there's anything nefarious. I don't think there's anything nefarious with that. It's just that's the corporate feeling about the narrative they want to put out there for their marketing program. So in order for me to go film and review a Brinkley as an example, I have to go and find a show or I have to find an owner willing to have me film it. Okay, so th those are just small little facts there. Okay, so from a corporate standpoint, number one, if... If it's not being talked about, if it's the narrative of frame flex and frame failure is being hidden or removed off social media, like I've had the experience of, and there's no release of a recall, there's no release of anything saying, hey, by the way, look out for this frame problem. If there's nothing of that nature, then the legality of coming out and saying Grand Design has a problem or Keystone has a problem can throw a lot of monkey wrenches into things. So in their defense, I'm going to say all of them, because eventually everybody's going to come out with this FrameFlex video now. In the long scheme of things, if I was a large YouTuber with, let's say, Mr. Beast level, if everybody knows who Mr. Beast is, Mr. Beast has over 200 million subscribers on his channel. He's not an RV guy, but he has 2 million, 100 million. If I had 200 million subscribers and I signed contracts to keep my mouth shut about things unless it's verified through legal, I'm not going to stick my neck out in that respect. That's, again, one of the reasons why I stay independent and why... If anybody did offer me a contract to be a YouTuber with them, first thing I'd put in my contract is, I'm going to talk about whatever I want. And if you don't like it, then I'm the wrong guy. Right? <laughs> so for some of you guys that have reached out to me, dealerships, customers, I'm going to tell you that even though you guys are upset that these particular type of folks are just now coming out with this. Cut the people some break. Cut them some slack. There's a lot of money involved. Um, if you screw it up and you stick out your neck too far and you don't get things perfect and legal, legal and, and right, you, you can lose your rear end. You can lose everything. I'm going to tell you right now. That if Grand Design, if a Grand Design dealership, a, a corporation that sells Grand Design fifth wheels stuck their neck out a year ago, six months ago, two years ago, and talked about frame flex and frame failure and pointing, the, pointing out the data that I'm collecting or trying to collect the data I'm collecting, th there could be lawsuits. And then on top of that, you're basically risking never selling a Grand Design fifth wheel off your lot again. And then all it's going to do is sit. So I'm going to cut him a little slack, okay? Because the other reason why I'm going to cut him a little slack and cut all of them a little slack when they all decide to come out with their videos is because I can't do it on my own. 
okay? I, I need guys with a bigger platform than me to talk about these things. Whether the narrative is turned a certain way or whether it's not completely understandable or whatever the case may be, whatever you guys feel, however you guys feel, I need the help. And, I do, and, and as much as Amazing Liz or Liz Amazing or whatever she calls herself, it would be helpful to have her involved in it. I need some people that are on the other side of things that aren't Armageddon level type of content, but more on the sunshine and rainbow side. Because if, if, if let's say Amazing Liz and Matt's RV towables and Miles RV and R, not, or Miles RV, not RV Miles, Miles RV, the guy in Texas, uh, Josh the RV nerd, uh, the three people from Camping World, the guy in Massachusetts, I forget his name, the guy up in New York, I forget his name, um, the guy up in Indiana, can't remember his name off the top of my head either. There's like 24 of them. If all of us came together and did it as a unity, it would be easier because everybody has a different personality. Okay, Josh the RV nerd, more calm, more excitement, more smiles. I'm the rough and guff sandpaper guy. Some people can't stand me, but they may be willing to give him the information. Maybe bubbly, jumpy Matt, the, you know, Matt's RV, towable and RV reviews. For the most part, he's got that. He's got a different type of bubbly personality. Maybe he's people will feel more comfortable sharing their frame flex or frame failure story with him. Okay. So we all have different personalities. I'm the freaking Grinch. Okay. If I'm if if you compare me to everybody else, I'm the freaking Grinch. So I, I need the help. I can't do it on my own. So I welcome it. So I'm gonna cut them slack on it. Okay. Normally, if it was something they were way behind on that was some kind of corporate yes man type of video. Yeah, I'd give them a bunch of crap. Because, you know, to me, corporate stooges or corporate yes-men don't give you the content that is more direct and to the point. And that's not because they don't want to. It's because, I mean, everybody's got a boss at that point, right? Everybody's got somebody to answer to. And there's a lot of money at stake. And no, I'm not meaning that to talk shit. Oops, I cussed. Crap. I'm, I'm saying that truly, like, from the bottom of my gut, I understand there's a lot of money and there's a lot of people's livelihoods on the line when you speak out. Okay. So the next thing I really want to go over is these articles in RVBusiness.com says RVIA January wholesale shipments up 11.1% year over year. Okay. That 22,674 units were shipped out January 2024. Okay. So there's a corporate narrative in there from the RV factories to try to throw a positive spin on a really crappy economy. Okay. So the first thing I really want to kind of point out when they show all this is they built a bunch of stuff and put them in yards. Okay. Hoping that dealerships will start taking things out of the yard. Um, and the reality is, is most dealerships I'm going to say probably 95% of dealerships have put a stop to mass ordering. I'll give you an example. I had a friend of mine that was at a show over the last two weeks. And dealers are giving him one onesie twosie orders of probably one of the most popular travel trailers sold out on the market right now. Every time dealers get them, they sell them out. They're not ordering five. They're not ordering six. 
They're taking one or two. Okay, and this is a common thing going up, going on in Canada, and this is a common thing going down here in the United States. Now, remember what I told you. I told you a couple weeks ago that Camping World bought out a lot of the yards because they think their gut feeling says that there's going to be a shortage of RVs and that we're going to have a massive spring and summer. If you So the majority of those units were bought out by more than likely Camping World. And they were bought out on deals to empty factory yards. So it's just like the unemployment numbers and all the economy numbers and all the GDP crap that all gets adjusted later on down the road. It's just a narrative to make you, the customer, think that everything's okay and let's throw a positive spin on one of the crappiest economies since the Great Recession. Now, do I agree with Camping World going out and buying all that stuff? I mean, I didn't, I'm not saying they bought all of it, but I would say they probably bought close to 40% of that. They probably bought nine or ten, eight or 9,000 pieces. You know, and if you think between 240 stores, that's only like 30, 31 pieces a store. That's not that much. If you really break it down, it isn't that much inventory. So you, you, you got to kind of look at the, the prospect of, yeah, they increase the amount, but that's because there are brands out there that don't build, that just mass build and they just fill up their yard. And then when their yard gets full, they go, oops, got to sell these before we can keep building. You know, instead of being proactive and dealing with the inventory on the freaking ground, they're just going to keep building. See, this is what probably pisses me off more than anything. Is you're going to go spend the money to build more inventory when we're already overstuffed. Camping World's overstuffed. RVR, which is Blue Compass, is overstuffed. We're all overstuffed with inventory. Some are better off than others. Some locations are better off than others. But every single dealership company out there is overstuffed with inventory. Doesn't matter if it's Canada. Doesn't matter if it's the United States. So why in the heck are you continuing to build RVs? ego why not take that money that you're spending building the rvs put your put the entire industry on pause for 90 days and distribute those funds to the dealerships including camping world not just mom and pop but also the big stores too and say hey look we need to get rid of this inventory before the summer and let's cancel the rest of your model 2024 let's skip the rest of 2024 as far as your model let's get to july august see where we're at and then make a decision whether to go to your model 2025 in september because i'm gonna tell you right now dealerships around the entire north american continent will be better off with no inventory right now than to just keep building. It's better to have nothing in stock across the entire Northern American continent and let the whole thing reset than to just keep fucking building. And I cussed twice, I'm sorry. Why are you spending the money when you need, have inventory out there that needs to go? Ego.
Okay? So don't believe the narratives. <clears throat> then they released this other uh, this other one. Professional forecasters raise expectations for US economy. <clears throat> This year looks to be a much better one for the U.S. economy than business economists were forecasting just a few months ago. The economy looks to set to grow 2.2% this year after adjusting for inflation, according to National Association for Business Economics. That's up from 1.3% economists from universities, businesses, and investment firms predicted in the association's prior survey, which was conducted in November. It's the latest signal of strength for an economy that's blasted through pre predictions of a recession. High interest rates meant to get inflation under control were supposed to drag down the economy. The thinking went. High rates put the brakes on the economy, such as by making mortgages and credit cards more expensive in hopes of starving inflation of its fuel. Again, another corporate uh, narrative-driven um, article in RV business that's dragged over from today's industry news. And, you know, from what I'm understanding, inflation is still not under control. From everything I have been studying here in February, inflation is not going to go down. Inflation went back up in February of 2024, and we'll have that report probably in the next, what, two weeks, three weeks? Which means interest rates are not going to come down. So the question is, why is, why is it that inflation is getting stubborn at that 3.1, 3.2% range and from what I'm understanding, they believe that the inflation is going to go up to 3.4% for February. Well, where is it coming from? Well, that's easy. It's coming from the grocery store. You know, I, I, I went into the shop for groceries today. I noticed eggs were severely down in price compared to what they were three months ago. But the price of chicken went through the roof. A gallon of milk in most places in the United States is still between 40 and 100% higher than a gallon of gasoline. We usually buy big packs of bottle of water. The price of bottled water has gone up again. I mean, it's slight. But it's inflation is not under control. The economy is not growing. Because you guys aren't spending. Your spending is at the grocery store and paying most of your bills. For a lot of you. 16% of you in my poll I did conducted said you're living paycheck to paycheck and that's why you haven't bought an RV. That even a $149 a month RV is unaffordable right now to a lot of you. And then you got retirees that are holding off because quality issues. And then when they do find something they like, it's too old to finance. Or you're taking a big risk writing a check for a 25-year-old motorhome. So there's a lot of things involved. The folks that normally buy high-end fifth wheels, high-end motorhomes. The majority of them are folks that are retired, selling their home, and hitting the road. But people are not selling their homes as quickly or for as much profit as they were because interest rates are high. So a lot of them are like, I got a 2% mortgage or 3% mortgage. I'll stick it out until rates go down and then I'll sell my house afterward. This is a really weird time. So trying to put positive spins on something is not going to help people spend money. That's what people don't realize. 
I talked to five of you. Five of you I called, asked me to call you. And when I talked to all five of you, my sense of things is that you'd rather be told how it is because it'll make it easier for you to make an actual decision. In fact, three people that are subscribers from the main YouTube channel drove long distances to come, to come buy something from me. Because they said it wasn't because necessarily I was cheaper. I was cheaper than most of their local dealers. That was a piece of it. But they said, we'd rather deal with somebody that's going to tell us how everything is and give us the ins and outs than the guy that's smiling and telling it's the greatest thing he's ever seen. Ain't it purdy? Don't you want to buy it? Okay. Let's get into some positive stuff. We talked enough about negative stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, D-Generation X proudly brings you its World Wrestling Federation's Tag Team Champions of the World, <laughs> the Road Dog Jesse James and Badass Billy Gunn, the New Age Outlaws. And if you ain't down with that, we got two words for you. <laughs> I am super excited. I have my new logo for the t-shirts, hats, water bottles, and coffee mugs. Next week, I'm going to launch my store for apparel. And it's something I never thought I would ever get here. I, I want to talk about something with you guys. And this is not because I'm full of myself. It's actually the opposite. Um, I never thought in a million years that my style would be popular on the internet. I never thought... Because he, he, here, here's a couple things I want you guys to understand. There's a company called VidIQ. <clears throat> It's a it's like a YouTube education company. They teach you how to grow a channel on YouTube. Because I was new to this whole marketing thing. Go back to 2018 when I was doing Facebook Marketplace and a bunch of freebie stuff and Craigslist. And I learned about Instagram Reels. And I learned about, um, back then I learned about uh, Pine, if you guys remember Pine. Uh, how to make Facebook ads. Things of that nature. That's what I mainly did at Ventura RV Car Connection in Oxnard, California. And my brother and I, uh, my brother Michael and I, uh, went to Bishop, California, went fishing up at Bishop Creek, Lake Sabrina, and we did like 10, 12 videos up there, posted them on YouTube back in like 2020, if I remember correctly, 2019 or 2020. And, you know, we just did it farting around. Right, we we weren't really taking it seriously, but we were having a bunch of fun doing it. And when <clears throat> I started doing this, you know, with walkthrough videos and find you know RV loan ed education videos on the main channel, um, I, I didn't really know what I was doing. I was just pointing the camera and shooting. That's why some of the contents just absolutely horrid. When I look back at some of my old videos, I go. Was I really that bad? <laughs> I mean, I'm like, I'm embarrassed how bad some of those videos are. Yet, there was like six of them that have a combined 100,000 views over the last two years because they're considered evergreen content. And uh, so I got into this thing called vidIQ. And then um, there's another guy named Ed. And he ran a channel called Film Booth, which is mostly free teaching of editing videos. And everything that I learned about how to market and how to sell stuff and everything else on the internet, quick pace, a lot of editing, a lot of transitions, a lot of popping up of texts and what they call B-roll. And I did that from January of 2022 to about November of last year, 2023 on the main channel. And I had some growth. 
I did a lot of shorts, but you know, I was only getting between 16 and 20,000 views a month. That was it. Like on the long form stuff. And you know, I had some videos do that did better than others. So anyway, um, I, I noticed a trend. My financing videos, I didn't do any, hardly any editing except for a few where I put sound effects and, you know, I tell you about retention and how to, how to get watch time and watch time is what gets you ad revenue and all this stuff, right? So my walkthrough videos were between two and five minutes, quick, fast, and... It just seemed like the growth was really slow. So one day, November 10th, 2023, I sat down and I made the decision that the podcast was going to talk more about... So for, there, let me go back a little bit. November 10th, 2023, I did a lot more homework into FrameFlex frame failure, things of that nature. And I transitioned it and transitioned a podcast to start including that. And then it grew and it grew and it grew and it grew and it grew. And then I included it in the main channel. And then I started talking about half-ton towable fifth wheels. And then my walkthrough started becoming like 10 minutes long with no editing. And now... We're at a point in the last 90 days where the main channel has had a half a million uh, long-form video views. And this podcast, whether you look at it through Spotify or iHeart or any of the platforms, has shot through the roof. And I have tens of thousands of people to say thank you to. And probably half a million people, if you include all the views, to thank. Because you, the viewers, you, the listeners, are the reason why this platform is growing. It ain't nothing to do with me. At least that's how I feel. I don't feel like it has anything to do with me. So for future content, um, <clears throat> here's what I want to do. I want to reach 100,000 subscribers on the main channel. I want to reach 250,000 downloads uh, on the podcast by the end of the year. And so the future of the content is going to be this. I'm going to start doing three episodes a week instead of daily episodes. So the episodes are going to be Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Those are going to be the episodes. And this is going to be starting first week of March. Well, I should say second week of March because next week i got a full schedule to talk about. But the podcast is going to be uploaded to YouTube, Spotify, iHeart, etc., Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And then Saturday, the live stream that I do on the main channel will be uploaded <clears throat> to the rest of the platforms, Amazon, iHeart, etc., Spotify, etc. So I'm going to cut it down to four days a week. And the reason why I'm going to do that, guys, is because number one, there's going to come a time when I'm going to want to go and do some fishing. <laughs> and number two, I need to start focusing in on the Spanish channel. The Spanish channel has started, it has grown to 630 subscribers, uh, 50,000 views a month between shorts and long form content. And I want to give that a little more focus, and I want to focus in on finishing uh, some things that I have for the main channel. So I'm not going anywhere. Um, I'm just going to cut it down to four at uh, four total episodes. Three are going to be are going to be podcast only episodes, 
And the fourth one is going to be from the live stream on the main channel that I do every Saturday night at 7 p.m. Pacific time. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to link the apparel link, uh, the apparel shop. And here's what we're going to do, guys. So for every single, I'm going to take half the profit that I make on any apparel you buy. And I'm going to put it into an account that all I'm going to do is help people that are on fixed incomes uh, fix their units they have to live in. Because some of these folks, that, especially in this community here in Pahrump, Nevada, are living on $1,700 a month, and they're living in 1990s and 1995 motorhomes that are falling apart. And they don't have the credit, and they don't have the money to buy anything newer. So I want to start helping people. And so any half the profit I get from every t-shirt, every hat, every coffee mug, every water bottle is going to go towards that cause. That cause. Okay. Uh, any super thanks, any super chats that you give me uh, on uh, this platform, uh, you can also donate uh, through, if you go to Facebook and you go to Levingston RV Services on Facebook, um, I'm also going to have my Venmo account attached there. So any donations you want to make towards this cause, you can do that there. Um, there's a lot of uh, exciting things I want to get done. The other thing I really, really want to announce too is if you buy a shirt, buy a hat, Wear it at the shows. Help the, the best way besides you guys. I know a lot of you guys share my stuff. Okay. And I'm really appreciative of it. But the awareness that this platform exists is going to even be stronger if you wear the apparel while you're out at shows and out at campgrounds. And what I'd like you to do is post yourself if it's you and your spouse and you guys are out and about and you guys are at a campground take a picture with you guys with the shirts and hats on or maybe you got the coffee mug in your hand and uh tag tag me not just the youtube channel tag the instagram tag the twitter tab tag or x or whatever they call it now uh tag the facebook Things of that nature. Uh, spread the word. Let's get let's get this thing really blown up so everybody has an opportunity to get this education. Right? All right. So that's all I have for tonight. Very exciting stuff. Remember, RV stands for toolkit and sense of humor. Have a good night.